Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the 1.0.1 version of the F-15 by DC Designs. They have fixed numerous things, but most importantly they have added a custom sound set from Sim Acoustics that hopefully will make everything sound a lot better, so we'll assess that primarily. Uh, but there are other things that need to be checked out that I'm interested in. Uh, first of all, there had been flickering light in the virtual cockpit and they say that's fixed, so hopefully that is fixed. And there's other, there's numerous things that I'm not going to check, but I'm just going to tell you what I am interested in. And one is the autopilot. They say that it remains a simple three-axis system. It doesn't have selectable uh, vertical speed or altitude. And you have to fly to the required numbers and then just have it hold. So we're going to check out that that's stable at high speeds. I'm also got to check out the general feel of the plane, of course. And uh, fuel gauge readouts and the fuel flow indicators had been inaccurate, and they say that's fixed, so we'll take a look at that. And uh, there are certain end guns on the control column that were fixed, so hopefully that looks right now. But uh, also navigation. Uh, so in addition to the all pilot, we need to be able to navigate properly. And so you see I've plotted a course from Rio de Janeiro, which I have not flown out of before, so this will be interesting. I Unfortunately, the live weather at Rio is stormy, so actually that might be interesting. Um, we'll go clear skies first, though. I think that's fair. Uh, we don't want to blame it for wobbliness that it wasn't responsible for. And so clear skies, and we'll see whether we can navigate to Alfonso Pena International there. And yeah, I think uh, we'll just see how it goes right now. Now I have a NASA livery for this, but I'm not using it just in case the livery changes something. Uh, so we're just going with the stock livery. And also I got it off of the Just Flight website, so I'm using that installer and it uninstalls the whole thing by default. I'm not using the Marketplace version. I didn't buy it off of the Marketplace, so that's just a piece of information. Okay, so this is what it sounds like in here now. And they said something about floodlights fixed. I think this might be the best we get the lights though. Let's see, turn on floodlights. Um, no, I think that's better. Let me just keep it zoomed out. Um, is that doing anything at all? Oh, well, there's panel lights. That seems to change where they are. I think overall these are more helpful. Uh, well, I don't know what that floodlight thing is doing. So, okay. Uh, for the HUD, we actually have to turn it on now. Mm, here. There we go. So we've got HUD power. And I think they fixed the anti-aliasing thing. We'll see. Uh, I've got it back on TAA aliasing so we'll see if it gets fuzzy or not um, I don't have a full tank of fuel I've got half tank it looks like uh, both fuel flow indicators I've got the brakes on let's just throttle up I test flew it once in version 1 and one thing I noticed was that the left indicator wasn't reading but that might have been because of the livery, and that's one reason why I decided to go with the stock livery. So, it looks like both indicators are reading at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit dark though, so I think I'm going to go ahead and change the time. So we get a proper look at things, especially on the outside. So there's the exterior sound at the moment. And I'm at 75% throttle here, or it says 77. We heard a little bit of uh, sound with the landing gear retracting, flaps. Not a whole lot, but I wasn't expecting a whole lot. So now inside the cockpit, I'll activate the afterburner. So this is without afterburner. So there are additional sounds, obviously. And 
this is at 60% throttle. This is 75% throttle. And that's 100% throttle. Now, fuel flow. Um, this is 75% throttle. We are at uh, 5,000 pounds per hour, I would assume. 50% throttle. See, now there's some interesting <laughs> quirks to that. But, uh, okay, so 3,000. This is full afterburner. It looks like 8,500 and increasing. So I'm going to put it on full afterburner and let's go to GPS navigation. Now the switch is here, but I can't seem to turn it. I'm clicking right, clicking left. Uh, yeah, I can't seem to adjust that switch to change the navigation mode. I don't know if there's some other switch that does that. Well, there's our afterburner sound out here. Well, there's a DME sort of indication in miles. That's interesting. I was looking for... So there is a heading adjust here, and it will go to that heading. I tried that during a test. We're not at a decent altitude. Um, we're at Mach 1.2 and climbing right now. And you can see the marker on this for the heading too. So if I want to hold, let's just hold west. And let's just say that this is the altitude I want to hold. So activate autopilot Altitude hold and heading hold, and we've got all those. We're at full afterburner. And we'll see its behavior. There's sort of a bit of a shudder, but not enough to give me a worry. Um, the flickering from before is definitely not here, so that's good. There's some minor flickering, but those that wasn't the more severe one that I think they were trying to address. I'm just looking for if there's some other GPS nav switch. There's a nav thing with jig there, but... And do I believe that the fuel flow indicator is telling me the truth here? Well, it, we're about one pound per second on each. One pound per second is 3,600 pounds per hour. So we would expect that since they're both using one pound per second that in every second we'd lose two pounds. We're losing about four pounds per second. It's a little bit tough to read that number, but we're losing about four pounds per second. So I'm not sure. We're at Mach 2.1 steady at 36,000 feet, and we're close to the throttle limit. Whoa, that's, that's pretty good. And it doesn't look like we're going to accelerate very heavily with the afterburners off. So, the afterburners seem to kick in a little bit later now, too. So I've got the afterburners off and we're already at Mach 1.9 and we're probably going to decrease. So it seems heftier. It's not as uh, prone to acceleration as it used to be. Though I think that might be the autopilot. The autopilot sort of sets the speed based on the throttle. So I'm going to disengage the autopilot and see if that changes. No, we're still decreasing. Overall, the autopilot did fine. I'm 
I'm gonna head back to Rio instead of going to my intended destination though. Yeah, it does seem a bit heftier. And we're only on half fuel. But still, the fuel consumption is continue. It's interesting. Uh, we're at. I, I turned off the afterburner, and we're at six thousand eight hundred on each engine now. Sorry, I don't want to be descending while trying it out. So we're at six thousand eight hundred now, and I've got increased throttle. And it see it, it wraps around. Actually now, I mean, it's indicating here that there's sort of a afterburner fuel consumption thing. So we're going from 6,800 and then when I activate afterburner, it's like doubling, which would be correct. But I don't think that's actually being reflected in the fuel consumption. I think it's being reflected in the needle, but it's going too far by wrapping around. I don't know if it's supposed to wrap around like that. But if we take a look at what's actually being consumed, well, no, it does seem like that's double, but I don't know if the numbers add up. I think each gauge is reading the total fuel consumption instead of from each engine, right? This is supposed to be one engine, this is supposed to be from the other engine. And at this rate, it'd be two per second per engine, or four in total. But we're getting two per second overall. And then if we go like this, it'd be four per second each engine, or eight in total, but we're, all, we're this is when we're getting four per second. Anyway, this is for, you know I've already had problems with fuel consum consumption in flights and trying to make sure that I get to where I'm going properly, so I need to know when my instruments are telling me the truth, <laughs> basically. Uh, so, okay, but... I think I'll just rely on the actual readout here instead of the fuel flow indicators for now. So it is a slower plane now. Correct me on that. Let's see if we can get as high as we used to. But yeah, overall the performance seems more like the real plane and unfortunately less like the Super F-15 we had before, I guess. I had previously gotten it to 80,000 feet. We'll see if we can do, still do that. I doubt it. That's sort of a nice look with the moon behind us. No clouds right now, though, because I picked clear skies. Yeah, this is acting much more like it's, it has its proper service ceiling. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get as high as it used to. So let me just briefly come out of... Yeah, that needle... The fuel flow needles are gonna give me trouble. They're wrapping all the way around. And at full afterburner, it seems to be using more fuel, according to this needle, at high altitude than at low altitude. Which wouldn't make any sense. And actually, it is ticking down more right now. I don't know. Normally, you even with full afterburner, you use less fuel at higher altitude. But it is using more up here. Well, we're at 60,000 feet. But it's not having an easy time of it. Previously, I had gotten it to 1,600 knots true airspeed without too much trouble, but that's not that's not happening this time. Okay, well, I see the airport underneath, so I do want to descend. Diving into Rio. Nope. A little bit choppy, but that's expected. It's trying to render stuff <laughs> hurriedly. No, I'm not gonna land right at the runway. That's not gonna happen, but... We may skim things. 
Yeah, there's not a thing you want to do if you want all the frame rates. Okay. Eh, could have landed. <laughs> So, airport at Rio, and actually I'm gonna go inside the cockpit to point out the stall sounds. You, you heard it do a little bit there. Let me go to a very low sp uh, throttle and pull up a bit. You hear that? It, it's grumbling about it. Uh, this time I'll just have a straight up low speed instead of angle of attack. Stall. Up oh, there we go. That's our low speed stall. I keep trying to push it a bit. So, that's what it sounds like when it's stalling. And this one I throttle up. Oh, hello Rio. Is the statue on that one, or... That would be a nice place to put it, though. I forget. I think it's... I see something over there, so I think that's where the statue is. Oh wait, is it getting buried? It's there, but it's getting buried by the landscape. Uh oh. We have to save him. We have to save the savior. I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be buried. I don't know, maybe there is some mod messing with it. I've got a lot of things. Okay, landing time. Landing handling had been really rough earlier on. Maybe it just hasn't rendered the proper mesh. Looking at those... those bits there, it seems a bit rough. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it just needs to fix the mesh a little bit. So the HUD look is fine, even at TAA now. The flaps down, it still sort of stalls at really high speeds. Yeah. Maybe I'm heavy too. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Uh... Uh, 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 water. <laughs> okay, that was not indicative of the plane at all. Anyway, basically, I, I don't know what's up with the GPS switch. I like the sounds, uh, but the GPS switch doesn't seem to be doing things. The autopilot seems to be working okay, and at least for what it does. And honestly, I wouldn't use more complicated functions except for heading hold and altitude hold with uh, F-15 anyway. So that's okay. And yeah, uh, other things seem to have been fixed. So anyway, that is the situation. And I'll look forward to trying to use it further in yet another attempt to fly around the world, for instance. Yeah, but uh, that is going to be a little bit harder now because it's slower. <laughs> It's got to take a little bit more time, but that's all right. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.